welcome back to the podcast that makes you faster with episode number two in the year 224. Hey JP, how are you doing, man? Hey everybody. Hey Daniel, I'm doing good. Another podcast, episode two. Um, yeah, we've got some exciting stuff to talk about today. Maybe a little, a little bit aero geeky for those who like uh, some facts and figures. We're talking about um, aero socks, calf sleeves, uh, textiles, suits, um, all of these things that can make you a hell of a lot faster. Um, so yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I think uh, you can explain a lot to me because I'm, um, yeah, like I said once before in some of the episodes, I'm an athlete, um, uh, but more than amateur athlete. And I use all the gadgets I can get as most of the triathletes are doing, I guess. But um, I don't know that much behind all of this stuff. So this is going to be very, very interesting for all of you um, listening and uh, thinking about putting on car sleeves, What, when to put on aero socks, when to put on um, an aero suit or something. So, um, yeah, just let's start right away. We just released our Suicide Aero Socks. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Yeah, so we've just released our aero socks. Um, so, of course, for road cycling, um, and as everyone uh, I think knows, you know, we're a big sponsor of a World Tour team, uh, Decathlon Arge Désert Mondial this year and um so you know we are focusing also on road products and we also appreciate that a lot of our core triathlete uh, triathlon followers uh, also do uh, road, ride road bikes and some of them do some road racing as well so yeah. you know at the end of last year or the middle of last year we launched our aero calf sleeves and um and so recently we've launched our aero socks so they are a uci legal uh, racing sock um, and of course, in UCI, you can only have half the height between your knee and your ankle uh, covered in mm -hmm. uh, fabric. So we took the calf sleeve, continued the development and brought a product um, that also delivers a really strong performance benefit, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and it was really surprising, actually, how much of a performance benefit it was, despite the fact that you're covering a lot less leg with the aero calf socks. Mm. So, yeah, it's a great product. Um, it's really accessible from a price point point of view as well. And um, it really has a big impact on performance. So um, I love it. Um, and I think, uh, like everything we bring at Swiss side, um, it brings real performance, which you can measure. And one of the reasons why also today and on all the publications we've put out, uh, we publish numbers and we tell you about the numbers um, because we can fully stand behind those numbers and uh, we expect you to be able to measure those numbers out on the road. And that's the point. It has to bring you an advantage. It really has to. Um, just f for me, um, the length of the UCI socks, so the UCI set, you can only do socks like um, our air socks now with, with, with these specific lens. Um, uh, why is it exactly this lens they, they set? Oh, who knows? UCI comes up with lovely <laughs> rules and regulations. It's, yeah, it's the same in yeah. my former career in Formula One. You've got all of these various rules and regulations and boxes and things that you have mm -hmm. to comply with. Um, you know, it just sets limits to what you can do from a design, keeps the playing field mm -hmm. level. Um, but yeah, in the UCI, it's uh, you know half the distance between the uh, the knee and the ankle joint um, is the limit where you're allowed to have your socks. And um, mm. but it's quite funny because you know the athletes turn up to um, be checked, and you know they've got their their socks at the at the correct length, and the commissar checks it. And then, of course, they turn up to the start line. They pull them up a bit higher. It's quite common. You know, we've seen it a lot in the racing last year. You know, riders yeah. in races with socks, which are clearly well above the legal limit. But, but hey, you know, rules are there to be stretched. So, um, yeah, true. So, yeah, so that's the that's the rules. But, um, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and there are always um, discussions between all the people that are using all these gadgets. Um, what is really needed what is helpful and what is like more mm -hmm. in between the gray zone of performance um yeah can you explain what makes the most sense for um for who like for a triathlete or for a cyclist of course like you know if you're road racing the aero socks are the product you're going yep. to use um you know they're specific designed for 
um, for, for, for road racing. Uh, and, of course, if the event that you're doing happens to be a UCI, uh, you know, uh, rule uh, event, which is governed by the UCI rules, uh, then, yeah, you have to wear those socks. You couldn't turn up with a set of aero calf sleeves, which, of course, would bring a slightly bigger aero benefit. Um, but, A, it would be illegal, and, B, you'd probably get a lot of uh, – uh, pushback from some of your uh, road cycling uh, colleagues. Um, of course, you know if if, if your if your goal is to try and get a KOM or you know a Strava segment or something, you know you could very much uh, you know do what you want. Um, no one can know whether or not you're <laughs> wearing the calf sleeves or not. Um, but yeah, no. The, the the point is, you know, we brought the Aero calf sleeves. They're a triathlon specific product. They don't have the foot part on them, so that you can wear them under the wetsuit, uh, so that you can change them quickly in the transition zone. Um, the aero socks, however, are a real sock, so they're, they've got a foot part, a knitted part, then with the special aero material uh, stitched to the top. And, um, yeah, they're designed for, for road cyclists competing in road races or just also wanting to look mm. cool with uh, a cool set of high-performance socks that will help them be a little bit faster in their group rides. Unless you are um, Rasmus Svenningson, who already said on Instagram that he will use both <laughs> in triathlon races. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually a good point Sorry. because um, you know, I, I have to say, I just want to add that the, uh, these types of materials we're bringing uh, don't just bring a performance improvement when cycling. They also actually help during running. So, um, so yeah, it makes sense to, to consider this when you're running as well. So, you know, whether you're uh, just a runner and, you know, Daniel, you ran a, a sub three hour marathon very recently. Congratulations. Um, were, Thanks you wearing aero, were you wearing aero calf sleeves? No, unfortunately not. Maybe well, I will go. Use you them. left, you left some, some valuable seconds, uh, on, on, on the track there, perhaps yeah. a minute. So, uh, you know, there's a, uh, there's potential there. True. Maybe I'll wear them in Paris because I'm going to compete in, in Paris in six weeks. Now. <laughs> oh, you, you should have, absolutely, absolutely. You should do that. We'll talk about that after the podcast and give you some insights on some uh, uh, All right. projects we're doing in, in that direction. <laughs> no, but um, no, I mean, in general, like um, I, I want to make it, uh, I'd like, I'd like to sort of get a little bit geeky, give a little bit of data to, to our listeners. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, aero calf socks, calf sleeves, you know, aero suits in general, you know, um, Why, why why are these things important? And um, you know, in the past, you know, you know, triathlon people would have you know, sleeveless shirts. Um, you know, even mm. running in speedos back in the old days. You know, singlet and and and, and speedos. Um, you know, that is not good for aerodynamics. And and you know, question is why. So sort of to, to sort of get, give some insights, some Swiss side insights into to that a little bit. You know, first of all, mm. you know, aero drag on the bike consumes about 60%, 69% of the energy that you put in your pedals. So, you know, every watt you put into your pedals, you know, more than two-thirds is going to overcome aerodynamic drag. Um, That's so sad. The, that, they're the laws of <laughs> physics, which, which, which haven't changed, no, yeah. and I don't think they'll change no matter what US president comes <laughs> in, but who knows. Um, but um, anyway, of this aero drag, um, 75% of, of that is, uh, is you, your body. Um, so, you know, doing things to reduce the aerodynamic drag on your body is, is really quite important. Um, the next mm. fun fact, again, a law of physics, uh, is the air doesn't like your skin. Now, like as humans, uh, you know, we haven't evolved, you know, um, to travel through air fast. So, you know, we've evolved to walk Uh, we've evolved maybe to jog a little bit, um, but we haven't evolved to move through the air really fast. We're not like sharks that have to move fast and efficiently through a very thick liquid called water. Um, and mm. so, you know, we know sharks have a special skin that's designed to make them more efficient and they really are more efficient in, in water. But as humans, we're not like that. So when we jump on a bike and we want to ride at 30 kilometers an hour or faster, um, you know, our skin isn't... Um, isn't made for that and so you know you know we have hairs we've got all sorts of stuff um you know it's just we're not good aerodynamically in that sense um but thanks mm. to science um and you know modern textiles you know we can put on a second skin um which can make us more efficient in in the air and um and for this you know we use special fabrics um which have the right roughness on the airflow and you know i yes i say roughness so not smoothness roughness um to make our surface more efficient 
um, uh, when traveling through the air. Um, and yeah, so to touch on that topic, so basically the speeds that we're doing in cycling, uh, you don't want a smooth surface. Um, we use a special aerodynamic tri uh, trick um, to trip the boundary layer. And now the boundary layer, you know, kind of geek alert here, it's this layer of air which is directly on the surface of your skin. And uh -huh. this is normally at the speeds we're traveling in a laminar state. And a laminar state doesn't really stay attached, doesn't stay glued to your body very well to your mm -hmm. skin very well so if we can trip it to a turbulent state so this boundary layer can have typically two states it's either laminar or it's turbulent if we can trip it to a turbulent state um, what happens is the airflow will stick to your body more efficiently and what that basically means is the airflow will separate later off the parts of your body and you thereby produce less aerodynamic drag um, the biggest offenders on your body which produce drag are the parts of your body which have a cylindrical shape um, in the airflow, so like your upper arms and your legs. And so coming back to the point, this is why aero socks, calf sleeves uh, and aero suits can bring such a performance benefit. But particularly, you know, the, the, the things that are on the legs and the arms, um, the cylindrical areas, um, we can really reduce the drag massively. And, you know, we're talking about, you know, 10, 20, 30 watts of drag saving at 45 kilometres an hour, which you can achieve uh, compared to, for example, in the old days in Ironman Hawaii where they had a singlet top and speedos. So um, yeah. that's one of the reasons why the times have gotten so much faster in triathlon is the use of technology, the use of science to make us faster. So, you know, why are we investing time in aero socks, why are we investing time in aero calf sleeves? Quite simply because they really do genuinely make you faster. They're not a marketing gimmick. They really make you faster for the reasons I've just talked about. Yeah, like for the aero socks or the aero cars, um, you don't have to, to put in all of the money. You just can um, afford them for, for your next season and then um, it already steps up your aero game. So Absolutely. that's quite cool about Absolutely. these aero gadgets. Yeah, absolutely. And that sort of was our mission at, at Twistside in the last couple of years was, you know, we're well aware that we have sold wheels and wheels are expensive. Like, let's not, yeah. let's not be, let's not make it sound better than it is. You know, paying over a thousand euros for a pair of wheels is a lot of money. And yeah. is that the best bang for your buck in terms of aero performance gain? The wheels make a massive difference. But, you know, the, the cost per watt is a lot more efficient with these textile products. So it was very clear from us with all of the, all of the wind tunnel aero development we've done with our pro athletes and athletes in general over the years that textiles are super important and that as aerodynamic experts, we kind of need to be active in that space. Um, and so, you know, that's why we decided to start investing and, and, and developing in this space. And we'll talk about that in a minute about, You know, yeah. how deep we've gone into this this area and of course we want to bring these um low relatively low cost accessible items that really have a uh, an absolutely clear and measurable impact on your performance and that make you faster yeah if you want to have more aero insights or aero tips just scroll down and um Listen, right after this episode, after you heard the complete episode, <laughs> scroll down <laughs> and then you will find uh, one episode dedicated to, to aero tips that, will, that are easy to adapt and uh, will make you definitely faster. Um, let's talk a bit about the development process of aero socks. Um, for me, it's like, yeah, you, we were talking about the socks and then half a year later, you have the final product. Um, But that's not all. <laughs> so how long uh, did it take from, from sketch to product and what was involved? Yeah, look, it was a really long development process because we weren't just developing socks. Um, it's quite funny because there was, a, there was a, an article written in one of the um, – in the cycling media um, and um, one of the guys, he was sort of frustrated because we released a 20-page white paper about – Aero socks. And he's mm -hmm. like, what has the cycling industry come to when someone's writing a 20 page white paper on aero socks? Now, this is the funny thing is uh, <laughs> the guy clearly didn't get the point. We didn't write a 20 page white paper just about aero socks. It's hinting that we're obviously 
developing in this space and it was very much a, a piece about how we develop textiles and textiles in general. And that development then can be applied to a whole range of um, cycling um, textiles products. So to come mm. back to your question, yeah, the development process was long because it was clear from the beginning that we're not just developing socks. Um, and we were developing a whole new way of doing uh, research and development in textiles. Now, we've been developing textiles actually quite for a long time. Um, we've been developing suits for other brands. We've been developing suits for World Tour, cycle racing, mm. um, Marcel Hoog's, um speed suit that he used in Tokyo 2020 in the racing wheelchair uh, was developed by us. Um, so, you know, we've been active in this space for a long time. Um, mm. We've been working with partners on the development but we decided that it was we needed to have our own in-house development, both from a testing and manufacturing perspective. Um, so you know, that's where we've been doing the big investment. So part of that was designing a, a bespoke wind tunnel here at our Swiss side HQ, mm. um, just outside of Zurich in Switzerland. Uh, and you know, that took a little while. Um, the great thing is we've got um, you know some amazing engineers here, um, Dr. Seamus Malaki, who was you know designer and and you know who built the Sauber Formula One wind tunnel which is one of the best wind tunnels he's our head of R&D here um and you know we tapped into his experience and of course my experience many years uh, spending over 14 years in wind tunnels in Formula One um mm. to develop this really specific wind tunnel that was specific to our needs um and how we think you need to be developing textiles and not just textiles other products um that we we develop so um you know, yeah a big, big chunk of time developing this wind tunnel, building this wind tunnel. So this wind tunnel we we designed uh, from blank sheet of paper. Uh, we built it and we assembled it all ourselves in-house. And I don't just mean the physical infrastructure in terms of the hardware, uh, also the software, the control system, everything was designed and built in-house. The only things that we bought off the shelf were the, um, the fan unit uh, to suck the air mm. through. Everything else was literally designed for us. So once we commissioned this wind wow. tunnel, um, to come back to your, your point was how long did we spend? Um, we spent about 18 months um, testing textiles, many sample fabrics, over 100 different, uh, you know, combinations, everything we could find on the market, then modifying fabrics, you know, um, to and testing them on different shapes, arms, legs, uh, cylinders, mm -hmm. ovals, at different angles, at different speeds, um, and we did what was called a, a textiles characterization. So you take each of these textiles and test them in many different ways, many different speeds, uh, to get an idea of of what of how they function and how they can generate a drag reduction, um, and at which speed, and under which conditions. Mm. Um, and then with all of this information, uh, we we pick the best textiles. Um, most suitable to a particular application. So if it's triathlon and the aero calf sleeves, we said, okay, we want something that's not just for the pros. We want something that works from, you know, 30 kilometers an hour upwards. Um, and, you know, do we need different fabrics for different speeds? You know, we were open to doing that. Um, and then we start producing real samples, real calf sleeves, real aero socks from these most promising fabrics. Um, we're testing those here in our little in-house wind tunnel. Uh, but then, of course, mm. we're going as well to the big wind tunnel, the GST wind tunnel that we use in in, in Germany, and then doing uh, tests on our mannequins, on our real athletes, uh, and then also tests out on the road. Um, so, again, to answer your question, the whole process took a few years, um, but the yeah. specific textiles development that's led to the aero calf socks, uh, the aero socks, and the aero calf sleeves um, was around about eighteen to twenty four months in total. Is it like you could go on to test forever or is there a limited amount of textiles available for this product? Um, yeah, look, there, there, there is a limited amount of textiles available. So we've mm -hmm. literally tested, I, I believe, every textile, let's say, that's available from all of the mainstream suppliers. Um, yeah. And there's only, it's interesting, there's only three or four main suppliers of, of textiles in the cycling industry in general, or not mm -hmm. just cycling, in the, in the fabric industry um, for sports. So, um, but of course, these these textiles manufacturers are all, always evolving, and so they're always bringing out new textiles and new textiles options. So we're getting hold of any new options that look 
based on our research and development that look interesting, and we're testing those. And of course, we also have the option to have specific textiles developed for us um, hmm. that meet our specific needs. So, um, you know, there's even 3D printing, you know, like you can print textiles even. So there's a lot of sure. new technologies coming out. So it's definitely not a space where we're going to see a stagnation in development anytime soon. Um, so from our point of view, <laughs> the investment in this wind tunnel and, and now, you know, we've got a team that just works on on, on fabric development textiles. Um, yeah, I, I don't see any lack of work for them in, mm. the, in the near future. <laughs> um, we already touched this, but... Um... Let's talk numbers. Um, what can I gain from um, aero socks or aero calf sleeves during training or during the race? Yeah. So first of all, again, for anyone, um, take a look at our white paper um, where we publish all of this research, all of this development process really transparently online with all of these numbers. Um, and you can find that if you go onto the Swiss side website and go to the calf sleeves or the aero socks product, there's a link to the mm -hmm. white paper there. Um But yeah, basically, you know, we saw from the um, uh, from the aero calf sleeves project that we saw four to eight watts drag savings um, uh, on uh, on all athletes, and we saw really significant savings also um, at all speeds. So it wasn't just you know for for pros who are doing forty five kilometers mm. an hour. Um, we were seeing really strong savings also down to thirty kilometers an hour, which is the lowest speed we test in the big wind tunnel. Um, all right, yeah. So, you know, it's significant savings. And most importantly, uh, we saw those savings on over 90% of, I think now with the athletes we've tested, we're at like 94%. So we're seeing pretty much, it's, it's very rare that we don't see significant improvement. And that was, that was really the key um, because the key was to deliver and we really made the statement clear. We wanted to develop a performance improvement for everyone, regardless of their body shape, regardless of their size, regardless of their speed, It was our goal and our promise to you that you get an error gain. It's not just for this really small window of, of athletes. And that was the mm. main problem that we saw in our research during this, this project. Because, of course, you know, we bought all of the competitive products that were on the market um, that we could find, uh, as well as you know, products that were just compression socks that weren't necessarily uh, intended for aerodynamic purposes. And, you know, for the aero-specific mm. products, we saw less than 30% hit rate on what would actually deliver a gain. And the gains were not very interesting. They were like, you know, a watt, two watts, uh, four All watts. Right. That oh, was yeah. the maximum we really, we really saw. And so we said, you know, these products, there, there hasn't really been the development. And also understandably because it's really complex. You know, we are super experienced aerodynamicists at Swiss side. Um, yeah. And, you know, we build our own wind tunnels. We have two wind tunnels that, so, you know, we have a lot of access to testing. We have a lot of experience in development. And I don't mean that to sound arrogant. It's just that is what we do for a living. And yeah. it's totally understandable. It's really hard um, to develop such products. So it's, it's no wonder that the products that are on the market weren't particularly performing um, because the, these, these brands, these companies don't have the skill sets to develop them. Um, and so, you know, that's why we said, okay, we can do this better and we want to develop a good product. Uh, and so that's what we, what we did. So um, moving mm -hmm. to the aero calf socks, you know, we talked at the beginning of this podcast how the UCI mm -hmm. regulations limit you to half the height between the knee and the, the ankle. So straight away, you know, you more or less half the, the surface area you can cover with the fabric. So I was thinking, oh, we're going to be lucky if we get – 50% of the aero gains that we saw with the aero calf sleeves. But um, what was really interesting is we saw 60% to 80% of the gains that we saw with the aero calf sleeves with aero socks, despite the fact that we're only covering um, you know, around half, a little bit more than half of the, um, of the actual leg. And we're also All covering right. only kind of the lower part, which is sort of the smaller sized ankle and lower leg. Um, mm. And that was quite surprising to me because I thought we would see the the gains on the upper part of the lower leg where you've got the main muscle of the calf, the big volume, the big size. But what that was showing us is actually the smaller size cylinder, the smaller sized uh, object that we have on the lower part of the lower leg um, is quite sensitive to the aero performance and we're still seeing very good gains from that. So, um, again, numbers, uh, we were seeing three to six and a half watts drag saving 
uh, compared to mm. the four to eight watts that we saw with the Aero calf sleeve. So yeah, the Aero the Aero socks were a really a strong performer, and again they're working at the low speeds as low as 30 kilometers an hour as well. So they're really bringing a, a strong performance gain um, gain for for everyone. So um, um, yeah, I, I'm really happy, and and uh, I encourage anyone who gets a hold of our products to go out there and test them, and you should see time improvements, speed improvements uh, with these products. That's our, our promise to you. And that's so cool because um, you usually uh, hear uh, when you go on a group ride or something, when you wear aerosocks or car sleeves or something, um, people um, sometimes are used to say, what do you want with these? So you're not fast enough or you're not good enough, you're not a pro. Um, But yeah, you will gain something out of it. That's what I learned now. And that's so cool because uh, 30 kilometers per hour is um, something you aim for when you are riding a bicycle. So pretty cool, I yeah. guess. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, on the descent, there are obviously places where you're going a lot faster again. So um, yeah. And to be honest, I think they're also a cool product. They look great. Um, yeah. They're super True. comfortable. Um, so, uh, you know. I mean, people have people people spend a hell of a lot of money, you know, thousands, sometimes over ten thousand euros on a bike setup. Um, why not spend sixty nine euros and actually have something that uh, delivers you a hell of a lot of performance gain for for your for your for your dollar? Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Um, and I just wanted to quickly pick um, this up again. Um, in the past podcast or in the last podcast, we uh, talked about suicide not being. Um, this really big company with thousands of employees or stuff um, like this. And um, that's really interesting because um, in every, in each and every product um, you see on the website, there is a lot of work in it. There's a lot of, um, yeah, of experience in it. And there's also a lot of heart in it. And that is something, um, yeah, I wanted to highlight because, Yeah, in all these other big companies, you see the products on the website, but you will never ever get to talk about with anyone about these products, um, or you will never ever get the insights of the, of these products, how long it took to, um, yeah, from sketch to product, and what it means to the people at the office at Swiss side, because they're actually developing um, all of these products in the office, then they're testing the products in-house in the headquarters and then they are selling the products to the athletes that's, that's and absolutely and look I, i have to say you know all, all, most of most of the employees at swiss side are all um triathletes uh, or cyclists yeah um and there's a really strong ethical push internally within swiss side that we develop good products that that deliver performance and i would not be able to show my face in the office if we brought a product to market that we knew didn't bring a performance gain, yet we were marketing that brought a, a, a performance gain because yeah. the employees would would, would quit. Um, so we have a really – what I love about about what we do at Swissside, if it doesn't bring performance, if it's not relevant technology, it doesn't get to market. Um, and the whole team stands behind that, that, that approach. Um, and, again, I keep saying it, that's our promise to our customers because – Our customers are spending a lot of their hard-earned money on their passion on these products, and they don't want to be cheated. Mm. Um, and I don't want to be cheated as a consumer. And there's far too much of yeah. that going on. Um, and some of our competitors um, do things which I completely uh, are not okay with, you know, bringing irrelevant technology, sometimes even dangerous technologies to the market that do not add value. Uh, to the consumers, and that's not what we're about. So I like it because, you know, we've got kind of a, a, a self-checking mechanism in amongst our team in that if the yeah. team doesn't believe in the product, if the team doesn't stand behind the product, they won't use it and it won't come to market. Um, and so that's kind of our, our philosophy. So, um, so yeah, it's um, yeah, some cool products and, and I, I hope people, um, yeah, like our approach um, and, yeah. uh, and enjoy their products. And uh, as I said, One of the reasons why we're very transparent and publish all of these numbers um, is so that you can hold us accountable. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, we, so we look forward to your comments that, that you are faster, that uh, you have faster times um, when you use our products, whether they be textiles, products, wheels, uh, whatever else we might bring in the future. 
And that's why I love um, the fact that we are doing this podcast. Because in the beginning of the pro podcast, we always say um, it's the podcast that makes you faster. And yeah, we aim to give you a value with this podcast. And um, yeah, if you have topics or anything you want uh, to know more about, just uh, shoot us a message on Instagram or somewhere. We are here. We are happy um, to interact with all of you. And um, when you go to our website and see the arrow socks, um, yeah, maybe you think about uh, the things we talked about in this podcast, and maybe you see that it's not just a sock; it's way more. And um, yeah, but um, let's close this podcast with uh, one last question: um, What can we expect in the future um, from Swissite in terms of um, yeah, arrow gadgets? <laughs> let's say it like this. <laughs> yeah, look. Um... It's no secret we're expanding our product offering. Um, again, for that mm. reason that wheels are very expensive and we want people to be able to uh, enjoy being part of the Swiss side journey and the performance products that we bring and not have to spend over a 1,000 euros. Um, so, you know, that was the driver, one of the drivers between the aero calf sleeves behind the aero sock. Um, you know, mm. I... It's clear for everyone listening to this podcast how seriously we're taking textiles development, that we've built an mm. infrastructure, we've built a development process. Um, so I'll let you connect the dots. Um, what might come uh, in the uh, textiles um, uh, area in the future, mm -hmm. um, but I can <coughs> so maybe say sort of mid-year <coughs> something might happen. Um, Challenge off maybe. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, this is gonna, it's cold. Cold is happening. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some cool stuff, cool more stuff coming from us, not just in the textiles um, field. Uh, actually, Challenge Roth is going to be a really special event. Um, even if you're not competing mm. there, I can very much. Um, recommend that you come and see that amazing race it's the biggest expo you'll ever see we will be there mm. with the biggest stand we've ever had because we've got a lot to show also with yeah. one or two partners so there's going to be a lot of stuff happening in challenge roth um enough said on that there's more coming from swiss side stay tuned and be excited because it will be exciting hyped <laughs> <laughs> i really hyped um yeah, so let's leave it like this. Um, make sure out there to like, write, and subscribe um, to our social media channels. You will find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere you can imagine. And um, yeah, hey, JP, have a nice day and yeah, see you soon, man. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you once again. Thanks for everyone to listening. Um, and uh, see you all soon, uh, maybe at Challenge Roth um, or otherwise here on the, uh, here on the podcast. <laughs>